The world famous Corning Glass Ribbon Machines are back home in Wellsboro. A big part of Wellsboro history was unloaded at the former Corning Glass Osram plant in Wellsboro on Tuesday, June 16th. Homepage correspondents Johanna Vogt and Jared Weicker have more. Skip, what is happening right now? We are at the Osram Sylvanius facility and we're bringing back home two ribbon machines that were birthed here. They were invented and, and built here, sent to various different places, but uh, both these machines were used in Wellsboro until its closing in 2016. Tell me about these machines. The ribbon machine behind me is a 5.1. That means it's five and one-eighths of an inch center to center on the blow heads, the orifice plates, and so forth. So we can blow uh, glass up to about five inches in diameter. Uh, this machine was built here, sent to Central Falls, uh, Rhode Island, was used there and brought back here, I believe in 2002. Mm. Uh, the machine behind us is more unique there were this is a three inch machine mm -hmm. several of these machines were manufactured by corning glass mm -hmm. and we have them all over the world there's some in hungary wow. uh, there's some in china but this is the last uh one in existence that was in operation mm -hmm. until the end of 2019 when they closed the versailles kentucky plant skip i'm sure that these machines bring back a lot of memories as well well, they bring back a lot of memories and they bring back a lot of people faces. Mm. Uh, people that worked on these machines, uh, that operated these machines, that maintained these machines. But this particular machine, uh, the three inch that's behind us, it was birthed here, built here, sent to London, England, came back here. We used it from 1982 to, to 2016. It was sent to Versailles, Kentucky, used for a couple of years, and now it's back home. Tom, I understand that Skip Cavanaugh used to work for you. He really did, yes. I was the engineering manager here for several years, and Skip was actually reporting to me when he retired. Wow, that's crazy. What did you do with these machines? Well, my original responsibility was the engineering manager, so all the engineers that were involved in the designing of, of this and, and the care of this basically reported to me. What kind of memories are you having right now? I'm remembering back when, I think it was this machine when it came in, um, they had it on two separate tracks, this machine and another machine on two separate tracks, and they could bring either one of them in depending on what product they, they wanted to make. And I understand that this machine was rather unique. I believe this was the only one of this type in the entire world. Wow. It was capable of making small bulbs and larger bulbs. Mm -hmm. And then if they wanted to make the larger bulbs, they would just use every other spindle. Are you glad to see them back in Wallsboro? Boy, I really am. It was, it was a really sad time when they had to shut everything down and it all moved away. Yeah. And it's just so wonderful to be able to see them again. Bill, how many times have you taken this thing apart and put it back together? Oh, it's, it's really hard to count them all. The, when it first came in in 1982, it was in complete pieces. So we had to put it back together quickly for manufacturing. And then every year, we had maintenance on it, and that's when we would tear it down, pull it back together, and get it ready to run for the next 12 months. And it would run 24 hours a day, seven days a week, round the clock. You know, when you're melting glass, it's, uh, it's something you don't turn off. Yeah. Bill, what exactly was made on this machine? Well, let's see. Uh, Light bulbs, number one, was one of the key things. It's a, it's called, it's a three, pi three inch pitch machine. So anything that was a diameter of less than like two and seven eighths or a little bit less than that mm -hmm. uh, was able to be manufactured here. Um, uh, lighting type, ornament type, thin wall glass type uh, uh, products on here. So uh, we also did uh, radio receiver tubes, but that business was really starting to die off uh, um, because of the uh, advancements in, in uh, you know, radio, so radio and television. Right. Ryan, I bet this brings back a lot of memories. 
Yeah, it uh, sure does. I, I had about uh, about 13 years here with this plant, and I moved down to, down to Kentucky for two years with the machines, and uh, I had heard that they were on a table to be scrapped, and I was just uh, really happy that the that the town was able to come up with the with the means to uh, uh, bring them back home, and so it was a real good feeling to see it, and I'm glad to be here today to witness the uh, uh, being taken off the truck and stuff. So hopefully we'll have a permanent home for them, and and uh, all the town can enjoy them. Ryan, this machine changed the world, didn't it? Yep, that, that made uh, lighting available to the to the masses, you know, because before this they were all hand blown and and they were expensive. And uh, uh, Billy Woods, the the creator of the rib machine, he he really was able to make it make them uh, faster and cheaper, and more affordable for the world. And and uh, so my grandfather, he was an operator for about uh, 50 years, and it was just a always really took uh, pride in the fact I worked on the same machines as my uh, grandfather so that was uh, yeah they're a, they're a real neat neat machine and glad glad I had the experience of working on them. So if you had to do you think you and your crew could get the machine running again? Yeah we have uh, quite a wealth of knowledge from uh, some of the some of the other guys that I work with um, might have to might have to track them down a little bit, but yeah, they they're all very knowledgeable, and they they taught me a lot over the years. And uh, but yeah, I think if come right down to the nitty gritty, we could probably get them going again. Future plans include building a museum to preserve and display the ribbon machines that at one time made Wellsboro the Christmas tree ornament capital of the world. We will keep you posted on the progress of this historic undertaking. Thanks for watching, I'm Rhonda Pearson. The Mansfield Laurel Health Center is now accepting patients in the state-of-the-art Susquehanna Health Medical Plaza at Mansfield. In the same facility, Susquehanna Health is offering physical and aquatic therapy, imaging, laboratory, cardiology, and sports medicine services. For more than 40 years, our six Laurel Health Centers have provided high-quality, compassionate care to the residents of Tioga County, offering family-based primary care services, obstetrics, pediatrics, preventive screenings, and diabetes education, as well as outpatient counseling and therapy services. Our passion is to provide comprehensive health care to all who need it with dignity and respect.